Last week, the American Red Cross announced that nearly 2,700 blood drives were canceled due to coronavirus, resulting in about 86,000 fewer donations. The Red Cross referred to the situation as a severe blood shortage. To bolster those numbers, GLAAD has started a petition asking the United States Food and Drug Administration to lift its ban that prevents men who have sex with men from donating blood. The FDA doesn't allow blood donations from men who have had sex over the past 12 months with another man. There are no restrictions on women who have sex with women. On Wednesday, Governor Charlie Baker announced that Massachusetts schools will remain closed through April. The order issued by Baker is to extend schools' closure until May 4th. Non-emergency daycare programs are also expected to remain closed into May, Baker said. The State Department of Elementary and Secondary Education plans to send school districts guidance Thursday morning, said Commissioner Jeff Riley. He also said parents should expect a letter discussing resources or recommendations for those who do not have a computer or internet access at home. Quote, today's proactive announcement from the governor to extend school closure until May 4th further allows us to keep our kids safe while building an additional planning time needed for a longer term closure. End quote. A prison riot in Colombia prompted by coronavirus fears has left at least 23 inmates dead and 83 injured. The country's Ministry of Justice said on Sunday there was a massive and criminal escape attempt at the La Modelo prison, one of the country's largest and most overpopulated prisons. There were no escapes, nor were there a sanitary problem that could have prompted this plan and these revolts. Earlier, Sunday Colombian President Ivan Duque said security forces and prison authorities were responding to disorders in different parts of the country, said as of Sunday. No inmates or prison personnel have tested positive for coronavirus, nor has anyone been isolated because of it. Hi, I'm Katie, and welcome to my closet. As you probably know, Governor Baker declared yesterday that all Massachusetts schools will be closed until May 4th. This extension raises a lot of questions. How will NHS react to this? What's going to happen with online learning? Well, look no further because I talked to Ms. Valancourt about those very questions. But first, a timeline of the online learning situation. Friday, March 13th was a half day for the Northampton Public Schools and the day we first got word of the school closing. Emails were sent to students asking if they needed a hotspot to take home. After it was officially announced later that day that Massachusetts schools would indeed be closing until April 7th, students received even more emails, this time about access to the school for materials and about remote learning. However, on March 19th, less than a week since the closing of schools, students got word that their online work was not able to be graded as stated by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And now, Ms. Valancourt on the subject. This is Ms. Valancourt. I'm the principal of Northampton High School. You know, everyone is asking what the plan is for this school, and really, we are still kind of waiting for information from the Department of Education to guide us in what the next steps are. So in the meantime, our district has come together and we have determined that until we get further guidance, what we will do is we will continue to offer students opportunities to engage in academics through enrichment activities. So teachers have been asked to provide students with uh, review lessons and enrichment-like activities that they can participate in through home. So some teachers are using Google Classrooms, some are just sending um, attached assignments for students to participate in. Really our goal right now is to continue to connect with students, make sure students are okay, to try to alleviate some of the um, monotony of a day that could happen while students are at home and to provide them with some social and academic contact with their teacher. So all of this is being put into place now 
But what we anticipate is that there may come a time where we will change um, how we are teaching remotely and we will have some new systems in place and protocols. I feel like students will be intrinsically motivated to complete the work because they'll want to continue um, thinking and engaging with academics, but it's a little bit of an educational debate, I would say, as to whether kids will participate and do work if they're not being graded on it. Keep your eyes on the news and your ears out for the phone while awaiting further information on the status of schools and online learning. In the meantime, stay inside and wash your hands. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Hamped Up. Hello, my name is Adele Jordan. Welcome to First Take Transcript Edition. Today, I am joined by Owen Shelfo and Ben Fowler. We will be discussing the effects of COVID-19, the rapidly spreading disease in American sports today. My first question for you two, is how you have been handling your time without the presence of sports in your life. Owen? So, um, honestly, I couldn't tell you what day it is today. It's felt a little bit like a prison, you know, without sports. Um, Honestly, I've been playing video games. Uh, MLB The Show 20 just came out. And I, I would be watching March Madness, but I, I think that's the biggest loss, is no March Madness. To be honest, I've also been playing a fair amount of video games, um, but rather I've been playing Madden 20. Uh, the franchise mode, just my player, Ben Fowler, created him, you know, uh, trying to relive my glory days at linebacker, you know. Touching on Mr. Shelfo's disappointment with March Madness, what are your opinions on the cancellation of March Madness this season? It's horrible. It's not okay. They should make it May Madness or something like that. Like, you have to have March Madness. It's the best tournament in sports. No doubt about it. This is blasphemous. This should have happened. They canceled, they, they said no fans should have done it. These individuals are happy, healthy individuals. I need sports. I need to bet on Seton Hall Pirates winning the whole thing. They were so good this year. Now senior Miles Powell, out. He's done. Can't play another game. It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Thank you for that truly moving answer, boys. My next question for you is how you think that COVID-19 will affect college athletes, such as seniors who, where this is their last chance to compete for the glory they've always hoped for. Mr. Shelfa? Oh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be honest, uh, the NCAA did a great job here. They uh, retained eligibility to uh, all spring athletes that got their season canceled, but they didn't give seniors in winter sports, including basketball, um, el eligibility again. And there are girls, the Smith College girls, D3 Elite Eight. They can't play anymore. And, and some of those seniors, they're just done. Never playing again. It's blasphemy. Sorry to flex on you, Mr. Shelfo, but uh, I commentated one of their games earlier in the season, and uh, they don't have any seniors. So they're going to come back next year stronger than ever, and they're just going to win it all, probably. Roll Pioneers. But uh, to touch on this, like I think college and high school seniors should both be able to come back for one last semester in the fall, and we can all play fall sports and a little bit of winter sports, you know, we can come back for football, for soccer, for cross country, for field hockey, whatever, you know, and we can all just have a good time, you know, just one more semester because coronavirus ruined our senior spring. Mine along with all the high school and college seniors across the country. It's a tragedy, it really is, it's so sad. Touch on what Mr. Fowler said, the absolute blasphemous statement he made about seniors getting their eligibility back in high school, it's not happening, brother. You, along with all your other senior buddies, are going to college. Why would the MIAA, why would the MIAA give you losers another reason to lose to Amherst again in football? Why? Why would they do that? 
You know, they had to get us one of the four years we were in high school. It happens, you know. You lose some, win some, you lose some. Like, they scored right before the half, and then they got the ball back and scored right after the half. They double-dipped double us. They made it to the state championship. I didn't, like, it was lucky, you know. I feel like we could have done the same if, if uh, some people were given more opportunities, you know. So, uh, screw you, Owen. That's all I got to say. Well, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you for watching today. We had the pleasure of being joined by Owen Shelfo and Ben Fowler. I hope you enjoyed their opinions on COVID-19 in the athletics world, and I hope you stay safe out there six feet apart. Wash Thank you. Wash your hands. Hi, and welcome to my chair. So in this rather strangely filmed transcript segment, uh, we're all kind of quarantined in our houses, so I figured, why not try and deliver my five most bingeable shows to you guys, to kind of take up some of your time you have when you're sitting in your house, wishing you could be out with your friends. So, to start us off, we have You on Netflix. So, from a team of various Netflix directors and heads, You is this very engrossing drama following how Love at First Sight quickly takes a turn for the worse. I was very drawn into the first season, and the second season didn't feel like it had the same stakes as the first season, so I kind of dropped off, but if you guys like it, let me know. Uh, I'm sure it's still worth it. So up next we have The Handmaid's Tale, which is an adaptation of Margaret Atwood's 1985 novel. It follows the story of a woman who is forced to become a handmaid in a patriarchal republic that is taken over America. It's a very, very good show. It's incredibly well done. And season one and two are just some of my favorite TV. Definitely give this one a watch. Um, <clears throat> third of all, we have Altered Carbon on Netflix. So in a dystopian world where stacks can hold human consciousness, Altered Carbon follows a story of a man known as the Last Envoy. If you really kind of like a Blade Runner aesthetic with some kind of trippy sci-fi concepts and some really good action, the the show is for you. Season 1 came out in 2018 and Season 2 is rather recent in February of 2020. I like it a lot. Let me know what you think. Next we have Narcos on Netflix. So seasons 1 and 2 of Narcos follow the story of the infamous drug dealer and cartel leader Pablo Escobar in his, I guess, escapades in Colombia. Uh, it follows kind of the DEA, DEA, the Colombian police, and how they kind of work and track down this man. Uh, season 3 at, follows after Escobar's fall off and the rise of the Cali cartel and they also have a new show called Narcos Mexico up that if you like the rest of the show go give it a shot. I haven't tried Narcos Mexico but I very much enjoyed my time with seasons one through three of the original. Last but not least we have Don't Fuck With Cats on Netflix. Um, it's a true story following how a Facebook group of self-proclaimed nerds ends up tracking down this man who had killed two cats. And how they did it is they just found all these little details in this very low quality video, and it's this very like white knuckle adventure that you get to be brought along on in this Netflix documentary. I highly recommend it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. So those have been my five shows I recommend for you guys to watch during, or binge watch during the quarantine. My DMs are always open. I don't have too much going on right now, so give me some feedback. Let me know if you guys liked uh, anything else I should cover, and see you next week. Hi, I'm Gus. And I'm Lane. Welcome, Welcome to, to Deep, Deep Dive. Dive. This week, we looked into the recent stock market decline caused by the coronavirus, invested some of our own money in the stock market, and talk to Eric Turner, financial advisor and investor, about the recent trends in the stock market. So my name's Eric Turner. I'm vice president of market intelligence at a fintech startup called Masari. Uh, we focus on market uh, data for traditional and digital assets. Um, so what we've been looking at recently is, you know, a lot of the macro economy, um, things happening across sectors, and specifically at uh, the impact on various countries and their currencies.
you know, what happened was at the very beginning was there's a big liquidity crunch. So everybody, you know, I mentioned earlier, the US dollar being the one good trade that's out there, everybody that was invested in stocks um, essentially wanted to get in dollars as fast as possible. And as everybody is trying to exit stocks into dollars, prices just continued to collapse. And it got to the point where, you know, anecdotally, I heard that there were some people that, you know, couldn't even exit positions because there was just nobody on the other end that wanted to buy those stocks, you know, not no matter what the price. Obviously, the market's come back a little bit. Um, I think some of the stimulus measures the government has announced have helped. I mean, you look yesterday, we had a historic, you know, high for the market. We went up 11%. Um, so I think we're going to continue to see this whipsaw action where the market goes up, market goes down. You know, we're not going to see any stability in the near term. And I think until we have an idea of when people can go out and start spending again, um, that's just going to be the new normal. Um, I think a lot of people towards the end of this bull run started to get a little more aggressive and shifted more money into equities than they should have had. Um, so my, I'm always a big proponent of making sure that you have a balanced portfolio, um, ensuring that you have exposure to equities, but you also have exposure to bonds. You also have exposure to some you know, alternative investments. Essentially, you want to make sure that you are counteracting anything that happens in the market. Uh, I, I do think we will continue. I don't think we're going to see the massive up and downs. I do think we'll continue to see some volatility. I mean, if you look at the winners and losers out of this, right, if you look at the individual sectors, uh, a lot of tech companies are gonna do really well. Uh, we're talking right now on Zoom. Zoom is all of a sudden the company that everybody is using um, because they're all stuck at home. So you think about that, you think about Amazon, uh, you think about retailers. I saw that Target saw a 20% jump in sales uh, last quarter or last month because of everybody stocking up. So you think about these companies, um, they are actually gonna do well and then on the other side, you know, you have the uh, airlines, the cruise ships, the hotels. Um, they're going to continue to suffer. So we invested in a stock market simulation, and we each only put in $10. We invested in cryptocurrency, and we invested in gold. We each put in 10 bucks, and we lost 30%. And it's a good indication of the market's current trajectory and value. Thanks for watching. See you next time on, on Deep, Deep Dive. Dive. Hello everybody and welcome to The Sauce Show. Today I'm joined by Nina Young and Isaac Steinberg, both members of Function Lust, the high school's improv troupe. Um, Nina, could you tell us a little bit about um, improv and what it is? Improv is kind of like um, a mix between um a play and stand-up no it's not stand-up comedy it's all made up so when we're on stage doing a show everything we're doing is uh made up and um we have some different games that we play and they have different rules we do scenes we do monologues uh and it's very fun how did you guys get into doing improv well at the ripe old age of uh, nine years old, I uh, started attending this Torah improv class, because that's the Jew I And it was with Heidi Haas, and it just steamrolled from there. I too took improv classes with our wonderful director, Heidi Haas. Um, I took her I don't even know what it's actually called. I don't think it has a name. I just called it improv class, but I started taking it when I was in fourth grade. And then I auditioned for the troupe in freshman year, and I have, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> nice and spicy. Oh, it's not that bad. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's, not, it's not that bad. Uh, I got it in my eyes. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> How would you say your, your uh, quarantines have been going? Um, I'm eating some peanut butter now. Isaac? Feel, feels important. Um, it's been hell. I've been, I've been just trying to do everything while also trying not to kill my entire family. So it's been, it's been going along. It's a normal quarantine, you would say. Um, I've done a lot of puzzles. That's it. Are your teachers assigning you work? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, am I doing it? It's 
skeptical. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm doing all the work that comes through that channel. All of it. Good man. Oh. Yes. Me too. Yeah, yeah, I'm a not classic student. Don't go outside. Go outside. <laughs> okay. Good enough. Good Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm.